I'd like to talk to you today about deceit and lying. I think one of the most fascinating aspects of Islamic doctrine is, is it has laid out a whole system of how to lie and what kind of lies there are. Many people have heard about taqiyya, T-A-Q-I-Y-Y-A, but there's a specialized form of deceit which I want to introduce you to today, tawriya, T-A-W-R-I-Y-A. Now, deceit is directly referred to in the hadith. For instance, the shortest hadith in the collection of Bukhari is three words, war is deceit. You have to understand when Islam uses the term war, it means jihad, and it is much bigger than the Western concept of war. In America, we think of war with soldiers and guns and planes and boats, but Islam doesn't think that way. It sees that as kinetic war is only one form, war of the sword, but it also has war of the mouth, war of writing, and the war of money. As a matter of fact, jihad of money is referred to many times in the Quran. The big thing that where jihad differs from us, though, is the entire concept that it is a civilizational war and goes across all aspects of being a human being. And so this is where sometimes Tawriya fits into the civilizational war. Now, Tawriya is best given by examples, but it means a double meaning. For instance, if I pick up the phone and you ask for Joan, and Joan is in the next room, and I say, well, she's not here, and by that I mean she is not in this room that I am in, then that is Tawriya. And it's not considered to be lying because, strictly speaking, it is true. A famous example of this where one of the compilers of the Sharia law, someone stuck his head in the room and says, is such and such here? And he turns and says, he's not here. He's not in the palm of my hand, you get it? Another form of this deceit is, you know, I don't have a penny in my pocket. Where in reality I have a wad of hundred dollar bills, but I don't have a penny in my pocket. Now here's a form of deceit which came out of England. An imam said this, during the Christmas season he says, you must understand we are to never ever wish a Christian Merry Christmas because that recognizes their pagan holiday. But you can say this to them, I wish you the best. And in your mind, you know that the best would be that they become a Muslim. So now then you've satisfied the social aspect of it's a festive occasion, you've said something pleasant, but it's a lie. There's another famous one which is given in the Sirah in which a man becomes Muslim, and this is in Ethiopia, and he knows that he's going to be asked about how he feels about Jesus, and so he writes on a piece of paper and puts it in his pocket, there is no God but Allah, and Muhammad is his prophet. And so he, in talking with the Christian king, says, I swear by, putting his hand here, thinking it's on the heart, that Jesus is Lord. But of course, what's in his pocket just contradicted that. Now, there's a very famous story which sets up the archetype of deceit. There was a Jew named Kaab bin Ashraf, and he wrote a poem about Muhammad. Muhammad didn't like the poem, and so he said, Who will kill Ashraf, who has offended Allah and his prophet? And one of the Muslims said, well, I will, Muhammad, but I will have to deceive him. Muhammad, do so. Now, there is a verse in the Quran which also refers to deceit. It's verse 328. Let me read it to you. Let believers, Muslims, not take infidels, kafirs, for friends and allies instead of believers. So they're not really your friend. Whoever does this shall have no relation left with God. In other words, you're drifting off the Muslim ranch unless you guard yourself against them taking precautions. Now, what does this verse mean, taking precautions? Well, it turns out that two of the most famous exegetes, Al-Tabari and Ibn Kathir, that is, men who are professional experts on the subject of Quran, say this. What it means is, is that you can hate the Kafir, but you need to have a smile on your face. So if you have a Kafir who's your boss, you can play up to him, or if you're care in America, you can play up to the federal government, it doesn't matter what scale this works on, but you can pretend to be friendly, you can have a smile on your face as long as there is hatred in the heart, and that is the protection that Allah needs, because the Muslim has to be very clear that he is not really the friend of the Kafir, but because it's deceit, 
he must make him think that he is. Now, I've given you a lot to think about here, but I have not told you that every Muslim is a liar, as some might try to make this to be. What I'm saying here is that every Muslim has an ethical option at all times to lie if it will advance Islam. doesn't have to lie, but it is acceptable to lie. So think about that the next time you read something that Muslims say about Islam in America. Thank you.